okay guys so till the previous videos we have covered all the configuration files and now we are getting back to the coding part but before voting, going to the coding part let's let's see the folder structures that other developers have given to us so that you can write the right code at the right place so let's first understanding understand these folders the very first folder which we are going to explore is app folder basically this app folder contains the component files in which your application logic and data is defined so here all your app component component html css routing module and all these coding logics are actually written so this folder contains the business logics and basically the code which is required for the screens so all these screens you can see in your application the actual code you will find in this particular folder that is app folder so whenever you will write a logic or a code for the screen you will write an app folder and understanding this is important so that you can write the right code at the right particular folder the second folder is assets the assets uh, actually this folder contains the images and other asset files which will be copied as is when you will build your application to other environments or when you deploy your applications to the production and all so this particular uh, assets folder contains images and other files the third folder you will be seeing here is environments file uh, folder environments folder is actually a folder which contains the build configuration options for a particular target environment say for example we have when whenever we build an application we can have multiple environments where these particular applications will be deployed for example when i am developing this application i will have a environment called as dev environment dev when i'll be uh, sending this particular project for build and in production i will have something called as production environment prod p r o d so in uh, as a as an initial project angular developers have given us only two environment files that is the standard environment file which is an unnamed standard file that is environment.ts file it basically doesn't have anything the second is the production environment file so basically it says the production is true and this file is for production environment so as you can go on adding more and more environment files like dev production and dev environment production environment which is already there though uh, call environment many more environments you can add to this particular environments folder the fourth thing you will be seeing here is favicon.ico so what you will see here is actually a simple icon which is an angular icon and this icon is actually used for this application in the bookmarks bar okay so i might not be clear so i'll tell you how it works so if you go here this is our application which is in working condition right so now if i want to bookmark this particular localhost 4200 what i will do is to go here bookmark and add this particular page as a bookmark so i'll put it as my first project and i'll put it to the bookmark thing so when i go to the new tab this icon this a icon in the red background is actually an icon which is received from this file favicon.ico file so this icon and the bookmarked icon is the same icon so if i change this icon my bookmark icon will change so i hope i'm clear with favicon.icons important importance the third the fourth file is index.html file so now here the main thing comes this is the main html page that is served when someone visits your site for the first time so this is the very first page when your application's life cycle starts so as soon as you hit localhost 4200 which is this i this link you will land at a main page which is actually nothing else but a index.html page so you don't like you don't rely on me so i'll do inspect and what you will see here is actually an index.html file so let's compare now in index.html file we have head head has the title my first project so let's go there it has head and this particular head has the title my first project the third thing i can see here is base href that is slash so let's go back the base href is slash there is a metadata there is link and there is body with app root so here's metadata there is a link and there is something called as body with the app root 
now you will be facing this confusion like from where all these scripts have came like this script tag runtime polyfills standard main.js from where all these extra code is added so let me tell you this is the first page you can see here in the blue background is actually your index.html file with some extra code added by cli so that you can have the the things runtime uh, browsers specific things at a runtime so the cli automatically adds these javascripts and css files to your code so that your uh, you can build your app and you can typically uh, run these particular things in your browsers so cli modifies these files for us so that's all about index.html file this is the very first file you see as soon as you land on your uh, localhost 4200 base url so this was the importance and very important index.html file the next file is main.ts file so main.ts file okay so you have seen main.ts somewhere as main.js here so index.html is actually loading your main.js file so as we know that in angular application we are not coding a js application a js uh, language we are actually uh, writing our source codes in typescript language so this is the file which is generated from this file which is main.ts file so main.ts file is a second important file in the application after index.html as it is the entry point for your coding in, in the application. So what you, you, can, you can see that it bootstraps your module. This is the app module. I'll tell you all about the modules and app modules later in the video. But as of now, you understand this important thing that this main.ts file is an entry point for your coding thing. It, it bootstraps or it initiates your app, uh, Angular application by bootstrapping the uh, or creating an instance of app module so that your code can run in the app, uh, browsers. So this is the main.ts file which bootstraps your, just remember this thing, the main.ts file bootstraps your app module file. Then the next file I'll tell you is polyfills.ts file. Now this is something I must uh, tell you because this is a very important thing and you will at, at some point of time you will face an issue which is called as browser issues. So many a time you feel that uh, your code is perfectly running in a browser that is Safari, that is Chrome. But the same thing, uh, the same code is not running in Internet Explorer or the lower versions or the uh, the the uh, bag like uh, those uh, explorers which are very uh, thrown away things so this particular polyfill.ts file is the configuration so that you can fill those gaps and your code can run very nicely in the delegated browsers as well as in the native browsers as well that is in the chrome and ie very smoothly so this provides this particular thing and you can see here that this particular file is giving a configurations for evergreen browsers which is safari which is greater than 10 and chrome greater than 55 including opera and microsoft edge 13 but what about internet explorer 10 and internet explorer 11 so these particular things are commented here so when you will run this particular application it will very run very very smoothly in safari and chrome but many of the things will not run in ie8 ie9 ie10 ie11 or the old browsers so this particular file in this particular file you can uncomment these things and run this npm install command and then you will be able to see that all the things which are running very nicely in chrome will is actually running very nicely in ie2 so at some point of time you will be needing this so just remember that there is a file called as polyfills this polyfills.ts file will actually fill that gap and fill that uh, issues which you will be seeing in the old browsers so now i'm, I'm just uh, summarizing it so polyfills is something which allows your code to have some specific functionalities that you expect in modern browsers to work in the old browsers too and what do you really mean by polyfill so polyfill is nothing but a plugin or a piece of code that is provided to you so that you can expect the browsers to work as good as the modern browsers so polyfills will 
emulate these features for you and you will be able to run everything in every single browser the next or the last file here is style.css file in style.css file you can add your global styles or the global files here and like for example i want my button in a particular way all around the application so i can add a style for a button to make it round or something and all the buttons across the applications will behave in the way i have defined it here so this particular file is a global css file to all the files present in the application and you can have two types of uh, extensions for the style uh, styles file that is css or sass so this particular uh, thing particularly depends upon the style preprocessor you have configured for your project but i always prefer the css styling as it is much easier so that's all about the folder structures and now let's dug in into the app folder where the real code is written so let's meet in the next video and let's get into the code deeper